girls, you guys read the uh, odd verses. I want the guys to read more. So guys, read the even verses. So you guys got to start, okay? Guys, ready? Guys, ready? Yeah. All right, let's read it. Guys, start. Ready? Begin. Region of the Gatherings, two demon possessed coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. He said to them, Go. So they went came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their legion. Amen. All right. Um, before we begin, um, I have cre uh, you know I, I thought you know I'm gonna use something different. Uh, I have I'm gonna show you a picture, uh, multiple pictures actually. Uh, yeah, that's right. Use of uh, technology. Uh, yeah, I think this is good. Let's just click the. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Let's just click it. So wait, wait. So this is a part of one big picture. Now, can just looking at this, can anyone tell me what? Uh, okay, shh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it that easy? Cause like, guess what? Guess what? Pastor John said when he saw this. And it, can anybody guess that? No, he's like, is it banana? Uh, next. But do you know where these parts are? Can you go to the next picture? It's really hard to see. Next. Maybe I should like get you guys to find these parts. Maybe I should put it up on a stem high and then like like you know one of those like uh, games uh, to find the where it is. Next, like I saw this, I was like, what? <laughs> where is this? Uh, next, yeah, that's I guess. Next. So yeah, the the big picture itself is this. I mean, I, I guess I picked two two uh, famous one. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> but um, what is this? Um, but the, as as the title says today, um, the title is called what? No, not the title of the painting. The title of the sermon in your bulletin says what? Missing the big picture. Um, today we're going to talk about, I guess, this concept a lot, missing the big picture. Um, and just like that, um, I guess a lot of you who are so artistic and, you know, so, I don't know, high class, uh, knew that it was a painting called The Starry Night by the painter who? Van Gogh. Van Gogh. So I was, you know, kind of, you know, talking to myself, is is it same pronunciation as the <laughs> the English and the Korean? So I actually had to you know look it up and then click on the pronunciation. Apparently, you know how the Koreans say Pan Gohu, but in English you never do that. You have to say Van Gogh. Okay. So for those of you who didn't know, that's a painting. And really, from uh, if you've never seen the painting, from the looking at the parts of the painting, you don't know which painting it is. It's just, as you know, Pastor John said, you know, it looks like banana or something that, you know, it, it doesn't even make sense. But if you look at it in the big picture, you know what the painting is and you know who the painter is. The same thing happens in the passage that we read today. Um, so the story starts off with this. Uh, Jesus arrives in the region of uh, Gadarenes. And it's the region um, that uh, is of Gentiles. Now, it's not so he's off from uh, Israel, and he meets these two demon-possessed men. Now, in the part that we read today, they only sh share a little bit of information about these men. They say what? In verse twenty-eight, it says they are they were so violent, or two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. 
That's it. But if you look at other, uh, other Gospels, actually all three Gospels, Gospel of Mark and Luke and Matthew, they all have this passage. And if you look at that, um, they have a little more description than uh, Matthew. So like, for example, in Luke, it says, um, it's actually in chapter 8, verse 27, it says, For a long time this man had worn, uh, not worn clothes, or lived in a house, but had lived in tombs. So a little more description than just living in the tomb or violent, but this guy was, what? Completely naked and lived in tomb. I hope it was not winter, you know, otherwise it's too cold. Um, and in Mark, it says uh, in chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, it says, This man uh, lived in the tombs. No one could bind him anymore. Uh, so I guess they tried to bind him because he was so violent, not even with a chain. Uh, for he had often been chained uh, hand and foot, but he tore the chain apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Now picture this. You went to somewhere that you'd never been to. And then you meet somebody like this, jumping out. See, the tomb, the, the concept of tomb now and back in the day is a lot different. Uh, now you're thinking about, oh, tombs. And then you, you picture about the, the, the round, the, the hill thingy. And then, you know, you guys all went there. You know, well, not all you guys, but, you know, it's, a lot of guys went there for this, uh, you know, it's hard, right? To visit your grandpa and grandpa and see uh, grandma and to see if they're not, you know, washed down, you know, from the last summer and all things like that. But, you know, those are not those kind of tombs. And back in the days, there were tombs that, actually, it's like a cave. You might have seen some of the paintings of when they talk about uh, the, the Nazareth uh, dying and then, you know, Jesus bring him out. But they, they were actually like kind of cave in a way that they could, uh, they bury, uh, they put the dead in there wrapped in a, like a white cloth. So, Actually, you can, if you want to, live in it. It's a cave. So that's where he was coming out from. He was coming out from those kind of caves. So naked, he probably has some chains that he broke off. And he probably was screaming like a madman. Uh, and uh, pretty sure, you know, his hair was all, you know, doctor and all this stuff. And, you know, his body is, it has a whole bunch of scars from the stone, uh, the, the, the scars that he made from just cutting himself from stones. Now just imagine that. It would be like, okay, uh, moving on. Um, but Jesus saw him and then what did he say? In verse um, 29, the funny thing is this man recognized him. Even though he was demon possessed, he recognized him. He says, what do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? This man was somebody that, something, it was a problem of the region. It was something that people really decided to not deal with because they tried and there was nobody that could deal with. Or um, they had really nothing, nothing in their power in order to control him or to help him or to cure him. He was a problem like that. But in today, uh, today's passage, we see kind of uh, three actions being taken, not towards just towards the, uh, the demon possessed men, but we see three actions that are taken after what uh, after Jesus met uh, this, these uh, two demon possessed men, and so I'm going to kind of break it down to three. The first is um, Jesus' action towards this man. So when he met this uh, demon possessed, as I said before, that de this man clearly knew. That he was who? Son of God. Jesus. Even, even in the text, even in the Bible, in the gospel, if you read, a lot of people didn't know him as who he was. Well, one of the reasons is because he did not reveal himself. But at the same time, they just didn't know. Some people called him as a good teacher. Some people called him as a, as a saint almost. And, you know, because of his knowledge and because of the good deeds that he did. But none of them other than um, later on, Peter calls him son of God. And later on, more people. So, But still, this demon-possessed man, because, of, I guess, of the demon within him, he knew right away 
what are you doing here? Are you here to torment us before the appointed time? And also the funny, other funny thing is that, um, that she knew that there was an appointed time too. That in the end, that he wasn't gonna be, he was gonna be uh, taken, uh, he was gonna lose, apparently, uh, in the spiritual battle. Uh, and he was not, his power was gonna no longer uh, be, be controlling the world, but it's gonna be overtaken by the, by the power of God. So it's interesting to see, but as I said before, this man was something that nobody could deal with. They try to chain him, they try to uh, you know, control him by strength. But surprisingly, Jesus comes and with one word, he says, go. And he drives out a demon. He was so afraid of him. He was begging on, fell on his knees and begging that do not cast us out in the open. And then they saw the pigs and they said, please send us into the pigs. And so what does Jesus say? Go. It kind of... Um, it's similar to the thing that uh, we saw, we can see before. If you actually look at it, uh, we see just before this story, we see the famous story of Jesus calming the storm. Now think about it. When I was a kid, um, I used to try it. <laughs> the Bible says that I will, you know, as I believe in Jesus Christ, that I will be, well, he says what, you got, you, this to the disciples, that you will be greater. Um, so, you know, man of faith. Uh, when I was younger, 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 no, no thinking. Um, I, I said, you know what? You know, I went on a boat, you know, with trip with my mom. And then it was crazy storm. I, I thought I was going to die. Uh, I was in the bathroom, uh, hugging the toilet, you know, ah, puking and, you know. And I said, you know what? I'll, I'll trust in God. I said, be still. And nothing happened. It was still, like, it was a crazy storm. Like, it, the, the boat was pretty big, and it was, like, moving, like, up and down, like, crazy. But, and I said, be still. Nothing happened. Storm's like, whatever. Who are you? And, you know, and after that, you know, I went on different mission trip, too. And then when there was somebody who looked very crazy, what, what does the Bible say? You know, Jesus, what? Or, or Jesus or uh, the disciples lay their hand and say, be, be gone. Or, you know, they drive out the demon and they, they, they go out. So, um, you know, was I, was I able to do it after the, the be still incident? Uh, no. It's not something that is simple. I don't know. Maybe you guys, you guys probably have experiences. You know, when you see somebody um, that looks abnormal, and you really, you know, think that, oh, you know, always, you know, Christians, to every, every Christians, it reminds you of those stories where uh, the, the, the um, demon is driven out. But in reality, can I do it? Because when I was young, I, I also heard of the stories like some people tried. And then literally the, uh, the, the demon talking back and saying, who are you? Who are you to say to me to, uh, you know, get out, you know? Bring someone that's stronger than you, and you know, something like that. You know, I heard the stories. I'm like, what if, what if it, that happens? Uh, <laughs> then what about my, uh, <laughs> you know? But I'm, 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 I'm afraid. If I'm gonna fail, if I'm not, if it's not gonna work. So it's not an just re everyday thing. But Jesus says with one word to this man, go, and he goes. So Jesus here clearly shows that he was, he had power over the nature in the calming the storm. But here also he shows that he has power over spiritual realm, like spiritual things as well. That's something that we cannot even control. So we see the greatness of Jesus. I mean, if I was there, to be honest, if I was there and just witnessing the storm and this, Jesus is... What Jesus says is really uh, not just by you know the Bible, what Bible says, but really what Jesus says will be the truth. I'll have no argument with him. He says, "Go and get water." I would be like, "Why?" I, won't, I don't even say why. Yes, 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 yes. You know, whatever you say, that that'll be kind of the the awe and the the ex impression that I'll have on him. I hope the people did too. 
And guess what the demon does uh, when he gets out? He goes into the pigs. So this is the second action, the action of Satan. Demon, Satan, I'm just kind of putting it together. Um, but he goes out, or they go out, and then goes into the pigs, and what do they do? They, we read it together, it's okay to talk. We, they did what? Oh, uh, they ran. Have you ever seen a crazy pig? Huh. They go like crazy. Uh, but they ran off and then off the uh, steep bank and died in water. Now, I don't know why, but I got very curious. I'm like, so did they die like because they fell? They died. And I looked at different versions of Bible, but they say they drowned. So I'm thinking... They did not die because they fell off the cliff and then they got heart attack <gasps> and then, you know, died because of the fall. I think I would have. I can't write any of those falling things. Uh, but they drowned. So I was like, hmm, pig can't swim? So I actually literally went on internet and said, can pig swim? To Google. Uh, my my, my uh, English friend, Google. Uh, and then... Surprisingly, I found video of pig swimming. Apparently, there is a this resort. They're famous for pig swimming in that region. They have actually like a like a for tourists to come and swim with pigs. <laughs> I was like, okay, um, but surprisingly, they can swim more than you think. They can swim uh, one kilometer up to probably two kilometers, and they will survive. <laughs> Did you guys know? <laughs> you learned something. Um, so these pigs, they fell, they could have survived. But what did they do? They drowned. That's why I call this Satan's action. So Satan did not want these pigs to be alive, but because back in the days, well, for them, there were, the pigs were more than just pigs pigs were their life's worth it was their uh, money it was something they're gonna probably raise up and then sell it so that they can make a uh, living it was something that they were gonna use it for food it was some big part of their life but not one or two but whole herd died so satan won wanted to have something to happen so that it would kind of shift their attention from Jesus to this. Now we'll look at that when we look at the third one. So what happens um, after that? When the, the people who are attending the pigs, were they like, oh, cool, man. The pigs flew. No. They were surprised. Think about it. You all got uh, your, what do you call it? The, the, the sebeton, right? Yes, you did. Yes, I did. I know he did. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, no, not him. Somebody else. Oh, uh, well, he did. Anyway, if you get sebeton, let's say you got sebeton, and you're excited thinking about all these things that you're you're gonna buy. Uh, I usually do that when I do get sebeton, but I never get that happening. And then your mom says, usually I used this happened to me when I was younger. Your mom says. I'll put it in the bank <laughs> so that you learn how to save up. Did I see any of those things? Not that I remember. Um, but think about it. Mom, mom takes it. What would you feel? Or think about something that you, uh, like let's say you've been saving up money, money, money for like mm, something that you wanted to buy. I know you guys do that because you guys are allowance and then you can't buy something and you know you save up, save up, save up and then all of a sudden that money, you know, you need to, uh, I don't know, it's either taken away uh, or it's gone. Then you'll feel devastated. That's what these people, they were surprised almost out of their mind and they ran off to what? The nearest town and they told people. Now, I really want, uh, this was interesting to me. When they ran off, uh, verse 33 says, those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town, and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. 
Now I looked at different version. I looked at the ESP. Actually, in the ESP, it says the herdsmen fled and going into the city, they told everything. This is the interesting part, especially what had happened to the demon possessed men. Now think about it. They, if 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 they were so surprised by the pigs and then they just told about pigs, I would understand their actions after. When they came out and they were like, Jesus, please leave. I would understand. But what I was kind of getting curious, what I was getting, uh, that got me thinking, that got me to meditate more, to see what God was trying to say was, they told both. Both about what happened to demon-possessed men and what happened to the pigs. And in some of the translation, it says, especially they told them about Two demon possessed men. Now, in, in, my, in my understanding, pigs are something that they can get. You know, pig gives birth to another pig, another pig, and then off go and off go, and more pig. It's fine. But these two demon possessed men were something that they could not deal with. It's something that really they, they couldn't tie down, they couldn't control, they couldn't even heal. But Jesus instantly, with one word, got rid of this problem. They should be celebrating. Yay! Now our problem's gone. There's no, like, this random person in tomb screaming day and night. There's, there's uh, this violent man who was blocking the way is gone. Now finally we can go even to, it would use that road. They should be thankful. But guess what they did? In verse 34, then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded him with him to leave the legion. Usually, and then, you know, when I read up to, to be honest, well, I know the story, but when I read up to uh, just the front part, then the whole town went out to meet Jesus. This is, you know, you usually see this when Jesus does something amazing, they come out to meet him. And usually what happens? They bring their sick. They bring their demon possessed so that Jesus could heal them. Because they saw the greatness of his miracles. Greatness of his healing. But these people, to them, their drowned pig was bigger thing than Jesus who had driven out demon. It says in uh, Message uh, Bible, a mob formed. So they're angry. I guess they really like pigs. I don't know. I mean, pigs are good. I mean, it gives up bacon and uh, what are, what are the, the pig feet, the chokbar, and you know, all kinds of things. Love it. Sangyopsar. But not that much that they get angry. I'm like, could you imagine, like, you know, back in the day with pitchforks and the, the torch and, oh, let's get this guy, Jesus, who took all our pigs. <laughs> now, why is this story, why did it, like, just, it, it lingered in my head and, you know, over and over. And when I was thinking about it, and as I was meditating about it, it's, it, it actually made more sense, and it was something more than just the story of, uh, you know, as they call it, what? They have all the titles here. Jesus restores two demon-possessed men. Even Bible just mentions just about demon-possessed men. But I thought it was, it really told me, and hopefully it would, it would speak into your uh, life too, about our Christian life too. Every day we experience the love of God. Every day we experience the grace of God. You could say, oh, what did God do in my life? I don't see anything. I don't, you know, I prayed uh, for 100% in my test. I don't see that. Or I prayed that, you know, I'll become taller, but I'm not taller than yesterday. I prayed that I'll be prettier yesterday, but I don't see any change in my face. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you some numbers uh, that I looked up. That how God's grace and his love works in our lives. 
I was surprised. I don't know. Maybe you're not gonna surprise. Like you guys are never surprised by anything. <laughs> But apparently, twenty four thousand people die every day in the world. Twenty four thousand. This is every day, okay? Every day in the world. <laughs> in the world, oh, how can I imagine? So I'll bring it down even more. Two hundred sixty thousand people die every year in Korea. Oh, you didn't know, eh? I didn't know either. And out of those 260,000 people, 75,000 people die of cancer. And surprisingly, there's a high percentage of youth getting cancer. And like looking at their cause of death, the cancer is up on the top too. 6,000 people die in accident in a year. And about 14,000 people commit suicide every year. Oh, it doesn't really ring, ring, ring a bell, right? So I even, you know, took, I'm not good at math. So it was, this, this is really hard, okay? You know, understand. Um, so I calculated. One out of 188 people die every year in Korea. So about how many, how many of us is here? I don't know, maybe I think like around 70, 80 here. So probably the crowd of doubled this, out of that one person die. Even bring it down, uh, 16, uh, one out of 16 people die every month in Korea. Look around you, and oh, that this will be around 16. And out of you, uh, one goes. Now this is gonna be crazy. I I I did it again and again because I did not believe my calculation. I I I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. Now bringing down more, one person out of two people die every day in Korea. Huh? And I I'm telling you, I did calculation again and again and again. I, I could be wrong. But still, even the calculation before, one person out of 16 people die every month in Korea. You thought you were living in a safe country. You thought that waking up every morning was something that you just get out of nowhere. You thought that you walking around the whole day safely was something that just, it, it didn't mean anything, you know. But look at the numbers. You being here today, this morning, safely without being dead is a miracle. And you know, I, I also looked up some of the, 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 the um, cause of death. It includes heart, what do you call it? The, the, the heart stopping, oh, heart attack. <laughs> I'm like going for like, heart attack. Sign falling and getting hit by the sign and dying. Car accident, sometimes hit by uh, drunken drivers or some of the uh, drivers that are very new and they couldn't really uh, know what's going on. Things, it, it, some of the things are just, you know, everyday thing. Now, uh, again, I say to you, Daily, there's grace of God. Daily, you experience love of God by just being alive. Yet, and you know, some of us even experience some of the, 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 the amazing things that God done in our lives. And, you know, we have our testimonies. Oh, in this, God did this. Oh, in that, God did this. Yet, we're like those people of that town. Something happens in our lives. Something happens that, that takes our, take our attention away from having thankfulness, having the gratefulness of God's grace and His love. Something like, oh, our grades went down. <sighs> God, why? I prayed. I just fought with my mom. Oh, God. God, I was going to church today. Why do I have to fight with my mom or my dad? 
or fighting with siblings. Whatever happens in your life, and then you get the feeling that God does not love you. God does, God's grace is not really affecting your life, or he doesn't care about your life. It's like that those pigs dying, those pigs did not have to die. But Satan does not want those people to see the greatness of Jesus. In your life too, he does not want you guys to be thankful. He does not want you guys to be grateful of his grace and be closer to him. That your heart longing more for him. That you're becoming more faithful to God. But instead, they want you to focus on the things that are happening right in front of you. Just like the picture. If you didn't know the, 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 whole, uh, the whole picture of it, if I showed you the part of a picture purposely, then you would have never known. Same thing. Satan is trying to do that in your life. He's trying to take your attention away so that you may not see the grand picture, the, the, the grandness of God's love, the bigger picture of God's grace in your life. Just like the townspeople saw a drowned pig, we're only seeing sorrowful things that are happening just that momentarily in our lives. Let me share my experience with you. Uh, oh, I need to change this. <laughs> I, I read it over and over. I kept on laughing. I said, when I was young, I'm still young. Uh, so when I was younger, uh, when I was like, let's say elementary school kid, oh, I had a great life. <laughs> By great life, I lived in a pretty big house. Uh, you know, my family was pretty well off. You know, um, my dad drove pretty nice car. You know, um, something that is equal to today's day. You know, Equus or uh, what is the Gen Genesis? Uh, my dad did pretty good. And, you know, I got my allowance every month, a pretty you know decent amount. And hey, I went abroad to study. Uh, that costed a lot. I didn't know until I actually got older. But you know, my school <laughs> don't you know? Oh, you might not be surprised. Who knows? Uh, my school every so every term. So my school did a first semester and second semester. Every semester costed about thirty thousand dollars, including the boarding and everything. Now, 30,000 in your, uh, I guess in our, <laughs> in our uh, currency is 300,000 won. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's not that much. 300,000 won just, you know. And also, I was able to spend about 200, 300 dollars, so that's 20,000 won per week. Without any thinking, thinking nothing. I took cab everywhere, and it's all good, you know. <laughs> You're like, <gasps> that, that was my life before. And then my dad's uh, company got bankrupt. And from all that, our family went to nothing. We really had nothing. Uh, when I came back to Korea, uh, they moved the house to, uh, where, where is it? Yoksam uh, Dong. And I was like, yeah, finally, we're in Gangnam. Woohoo! And then apparently what was happening was they were running away from those people who are coming after them. Because his company was bankrupt and he needed to pay. I didn't know. They didn't tell me either. They're like, oh, just we're just staying here until we move to somewhere else. And later on, when I came back... Uh, from my, I think, junior, oh no, freshman year, ninth grade, my, my mom goes, uh, my dad did not come to the airport. My mom goes, oh, we need to talk. Uh, what's up? She takes me and my sister to this cafe, nice cafe. Um, and she says, I'm sorry, your dad, because she told me that he was in hospital. Sorry, your dad's not in hospital. He's in a, um, not a present, but the, the, the similar to it. He was in there because of his debt that he couldn't so he was considered as a uh, not a thief but he was like a you know somebody who issued a blank check I was out of uh, like me spending all those time you know luxurious 
not luxurious, you know, comfortable to that. In that time, all I, you know, I, 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 I complained to God every single moment of my life. I was like, God, why? What did I do? Okay, fine. I didn't go to church, so fine. I'll go to church. Would you? Would you then, you know, recover my family? I went to church. I went to church for, to be honest, Korean food. Uh, but still, I went to church because I wanted my family to get better. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. I, every every um, you know, time I went to church, I prayed with my you know, tears. And I was like literally like just crying my lungs out. And I prayed and I prayed. Did my family get better? No. I was thinking, you know, God, what is this? Where is your grace? Where is your love in my life? All those people who do not believe you are doing so much better than me. They have family, they have money, they have comfort and everything. You know, think about it in your age. Your friends say, uh, let's go to a movie on the weekend. And you just have to say, I can't. That was me back in your age. Uh, even living in the dormitory, they would all go out. Yeah, let's go and watch a movie. Yay. I'm like, Mike, let's go. Sorry, I can't. Why not? Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to go. Reality was I did not have money to go buy the ticket for the movie. So I just stayed. Now, that was me when I did not see the grace of God. When That was me when I did not see the love of God. And I started seeing that when he really, because I guess I was blind to that too. But because he loved me, because he wanted me to see that, he started to just literally make things happen in front of my eyes. When I was in 10th grade, uh, there was no tuition for me, the $30,000. I was like, oh, what do I do? The, the, the school was kind enough. They're like, oh, it's okay, Mike. Uh, you know, we know your situation just so pay uh, 15,000. <laughs> 15,000, I can't even go and watch a movie. <laughs> Hello, people. Uh, Oh, this was actually my senior year. And then my some of my teachers knew. Apparently, they got together. Three of them got together and paid for my tuition. I didn't know that until my graduation day. They came. One other teacher came up to me and said, can you please go and thank this and this teacher? Like, what, what, what happened? <laughs> what did I do? Did they give me a good mark? <laughs> did I get an A? Like, no, uh, this happened. Uh, that that changed my life. Not that because they pay for my tuition. It was, I think, I just experienced God's grace uh, because in my situation where I thought that God did not love me, it opened my eyes to see God does still care. God does still, His grace runs through in, in my life. And after that, I start to see bigger picture of his great love, bigger picture of his grace, that not just physically him helping me financially or, or, or things like that, but he died for me on the cross. You know, to be standing in front of you, I'm not speaking in front of you because I'm a, some, somebody that's better. Uh, and I tell this all the, all the time to our, uh, our worship team. I, I tell this to uh, a lot of times to our uh, Bible study. But I stand up here to tell you how much God has done in my life. Then definitely he can do so much in your life. Don't be those people who, those town people that were so focused on what will affect their life right now that their pigs are drowned and they have no money they have no pigs to sell no pigs to eat but i hope that through this that you'll be able to focus more on what god is doing in your life how he's protecting you how he's um, really being with you daily when you're sad when you're when you're just filled with uh, the uh, depressed feeling, you know, when you're, when you're down because of your school, friends, family. Don't just think about, oh, why is this happening to me? But trying to see at that time, to see a bigger picture. What has God done? What has Jesus done for me? 
answer is he has done a lot for you. He has done a lot for you. And in different versions, not Matthew, but because these demon-possessed uh, demon men saw the greatness of God, greatness of Jesus, after he was uh, okay, he, he became sane, he says to Jesus, Jesus, may I follow you and become your disciple? That's what happens when they see the bigger picture, the, the actual picture we ought to see. That's my hope for you guys. As we start off the new year, I know some of you guys already started uh, your school. But I hope that this year, that this year will be some, something that you will see the bigger picture of God's plan and God's love in your life. Let's stop being a complainer. I complain too a lot. You know, <laughs> If I don't get something, I'm like, oh God, why? <laughs> It's not fair, you know. I do all this at church, but why? And then he like smacks me like, <laughs> that's not because what, you know, that's why you shouldn't be doing that. But you don't come here because of that either. You come here because you love God. So, Father God, um, thank you so much for your love. Who are we to deserve your love? Who are we to deserve your one and only son to come and die? in pain and in shame. I pray, Father God, that we may stop focusing on the things that are not happening, that are not being allowed, not being given in our lives. For it is so little and it is so inconsiderable compared to the things that you have allowed and given us and poured out upon us, Lord. I pray as we continue to see it in that way, that as those... Uh, two demon possessed men wanted to become the disciple and wanted to follow and in the end they were able to really tell what Jesus did in that region I pray Father God that we may become people that are able to just Lord tell others tell our um, stories of what God did in our life to our friends to our families wherever we go a school hagwon wherever it is help us not be ashamed to share what you have done in our life for it is so great and other people and let us have that heart wanting them to also experience it as well father god just thank you so much for your grace and thank you so much for your love help us lord to become your loving child as well following after you just listening longing to listen to your voice for you deserve our, our heart. You deserve our life, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray also in Jesus' name. Amen.